My dearest brothers and sisters. This is Tunia speaking. I love you so very much. I hope you have had a good Christmas. My family and myself would like to wish you a good new year for those of you living with the Western calendar. Also from all the people in my local community and from all the other people who have been channeled by this channeler in the past, Arcock, Tourmaline, Anyos and others, our best wishes for the new year. It hurts my heart that so many of you are still suffering. And it's not looking like 2024 is going to be a very gentle year either. Hakan will provide a geopolitical update next week. In short, we are very unhappy with the gray hats. While they are doing some things behind the scenes, we think they should have freed humanity years ago. We also suspect that if we don't do anything, and if the gray hats win, then they will simply become yet another shadowy group that controls humanity from behind the scenes. They'll be a nicer shadowy group than the current dark controllers, and you would have better living conditions under their rule. However we would like to see you freed, not be controlled by nicer people. It's perverse that the gray hats are letting the people suffer, and then turn around and effectively say while well, the people are stupid and uninformed and desperate. Therefore we can't just come out, announce ourselves, present evidence, arrest the criminals and then lighten the load on people's shoulders. Well, that would work just fine, our offer of support to you is still open if you want to do just that. Also, maybe the people wouldn't be so stupid and uninformed and desperate if you allowed them access to truthful information, if you stop the brainwashing and poisoning programs and if you lighten their burden so that they have time to think and don't have to be concerned with just surviving. If you hoard the information and medical technology and financial resources for yourselves, of course you'll be better informed and more level-headed than the average person, but that's because you're hoarding everything for yourselves. Furthermore, that's the same logic that the dark controllers are using. At this point both the dark controllers and the gray hats are using circular logic, they think they should be the ones to have access to information and money and technology, because they're better people than the average Joe. And they think they're better people than the average Joe because of the benefits they're getting from the information and technology and money that they're hoarding for themselves. Now, to be clear, the gray hats do sincerely intend to lighten the load on the shoulders of average people. But again, us galactics would like to see you freed not have a nicer group of controllers continue to direct you and make the important decisions behind the scenes. As for us, the current plan of the Galactic Confederation is still to intervene in 2024 or 2025, if there hasn't been a mass uprising by the common man or a solar flash or a substantial and productive move by the Grey Hats. It's hard to predict the future, but my best guess would be that either an intervention by us, or a solar flash or a big gray hat move won't yet happen in 2024, however that one of those things will happen in 2025. Although there's also a small probability that none of these things will happen in either 2024 or 2025. If one of these things do happen in 2024, then it's likely that they will happen either roughly around April, for energetic reasons, or near the end of 2024, for energetic and US election reasons. The Galactic Confederation decision makers have formulated an intervention policy, and it depends more on energy and on the state of the world than on precise dates. However, that intervention policy is likely going to result in a 2024 or more probably a 2025 intervention, if there is no solar flash or a big and productive move by the gray hats. That said, many galactics are feeling that this is too slow and too conservative, because the people of Earth are suffering too much and help is too slow to arrive. Ideally Earth humans should free themselves, and theoretically you absolutely can free yourselves. Also, the more time passes, the higher the energy on Earth becomes, which means that an intervention in 2025 has fewer risks of creating instability than an intervention in 2024 would. So those are arguments from the decision makers in favor of their current 2024 or 2025 intervention policy. Still, many galactics and other beings are now feeling that letting the people of Earth suffer for another year is too long and that ideally substantial help for you should arrive in early or mid-2024. One example of this is Gaia in her earlier message Gaia, please help my children. It happens somewhat frequently that us galactics observe that there is a race of not yet fully space-faring people somewhere who are experiencing a certain amount of suffering. Normally, we leave the decision on what to do to our decision-makers. 
nearly always, they make the by-the-book choice, which is to let those other people sort out their own situation to a certain extent before we openly land or openly contact them. While the exact conditions depend on the situation, often we want to see them be able to live together with one another in peace and have a majority of the population want to meet us. Waiting for that is normally better than us intervening prematurely, even if the people are suffering in needless ways, we know this from experience on earth and elsewhere. We have no law against intervention. We don't have Star Trek's prime directive. We just know from experience that letting people sort out their own situation is usually best for them in the medium term. We've hurt ourselves and other people before by intervening too quickly. Even with the best intentions, intervening too quickly can be counterproductive and can actually increase a people's suffering over the long term. Still, the Earth situation has become controversial in our society, because frankly your level of suffering is intense and it has been going on for too long. There is also a bigger split on Earth than normal. On Earth, you have one group of awake people who want freedom and peace, and another bigger group of sleepers who effectively just want a slightly more comfortable version of the status quo. They're mostly fine with being controlled, so long as that's moderately comfortable for them. These sleepers are often fine with or even happy if the awake people get censored or otherwise have their free will violated. The awake people are not consenting to being treated this way and it's also not optimal for their soul's growth to be treated this way, yet it's practically very hard for the awake to either free themselves or to make big strides towards freeing earth. It's somewhat common for a world to be run by some group of controllers, with the population being unfortunately low consciousness and wanting just a bit more comfort and a bit less harshness. And while we will free such a world if we have the military capability to do so, ultimately those worlds do serve a kind of purpose, souls can learn what it is to live in slavery and bondage on such a world. People's souls want varied experiences to get soul growth, and so souls will sometimes actually choose to voluntarily incarnate in such worlds. It's also somewhat common for there to be a world run by dark controllers, but the population is relatively high consciousness, and it's relatively doable for the people to free themselves. In that case, it's fine for us to wait because then the people do free themselves, and that's a valuable experience for them, and us intervening always carries some amount of risk of us destabilizing that world. But the Earth situation is pretty rare, where the difference in consciousness between people is big, and the low consciousness people often actively like it when the dark controllers go after the relatively high consciousness people, because those are spreaders of disinformation or some other dehumanizing term like that. And so the relatively high consciousness people aren't benefiting from the situation in terms of soul growth, and they also have little practical ability to change it. For example, the poll linked in the description under this video indicated that 29% of Democratic voters would support temporarily removing parents' custody of their children if parents refused to take the so-called COVID vaccine. My point here isn't that left-wing people are low consciousness and right-wing people are high consciousness, it's more complicated than that. My point is that on Earth, often the low consciousness people support harsh authoritarian measures against higher consciousness people. Now I personally don't want to see anyone enslaved, but especially on Earth I can understand the perspective of the relatively high conscious people who are basically saying, if the sleepers are fine with living in a world of censorship and control, fine, but we don't, and we have no practical way to free ourselves from that. Yes, that is a fair point. While I also want to free the sleepers, the situation is especially unfair to the awake. And yes, theoretically the people of Earth can free themselves, and certainly I support such efforts. However, it's easy for someone not living on Earth to say just free yourselves. It's another matter entirely for someone born on a world that controls, disconnects, poisons, gaslights and brainwashes them to launch a campaign that liberates their world. It's possible, but it's not easy, and it's not really fair for someone not living on Earth to say oh, just do something incredibly difficult and pretend that that's a solution. That would be a bit like a person born into wealth giving out of touch financial advice to a person born into poverty. Hence there are increasingly many galactic voices who are saying that we should consider intervening in the next six months, even though that's not the by the book decision. On the other hand, most of the higher up decision makers, including Ashtar Sharon, currently maintain that the best policy is what they previously formulated, 
which is intervening in 2024 or 2025 if nothing big happens before then. From their perspective, they are making the tough, unsentimental but necessary choice. And from a purely rational perspective, their stance is logical. After all, if we intervene and remove the dark controllers, we might create a power vacuum that could actually lead to large-scale wars. Also, if we intervene, some other Earth humans might just take the place of the dark controllers. Whereas if you free yourselves, then we know the resulting society will be stable, and that you will learn all the lessons that you need to move forward together as one people. So intervening in the next six months or so, versus intervening in probably 2025 could be seen as a heart versus rational mind discussion. To be clear, our decision makers aren't in decision making positions because they happen to be rich or powerful. There are decision makers because they genuinely are the wisest and farthest seeing among us. On the other hand, the higher consciousness that beings become, the more they tend to view suffering as simply another experience. And yes, from their level of consciousness that is true. If you take Ashtar Sharon as he currently is and subject him to pain and to tough conditions, then he is enlightened enough that he would just observe it and feel it, but not suffer from it. But of course, the people of Earth haven't grown up in a society that helps them develop that level of consciousness. It's always easy for a person to say that someone else should bear a heavy load for some supposed greater good. Now in normal situations, the higher up decision makers would just decide on when to intervene, and that would be it. However, for Earth specifically, a galactic court has gotten involved, because a large number of us galactics feel that the decision makers are being too coldly rational. This is a pretty unprecedented situation. Gaia is one of the witnesses in the court case. A couple of lightworkers have also testified in their sleep. The court case took a few days and ended on December 26, 2026. The court's verdict is, the decision makers will remain the ones to make the decision. However, every decision maker will have to either choose to not vote on earth matters, or they will have to spend a certain amount of time every cycle, the time between two periods of rest, such as sleeping or meditation, observing earth and feeling into the energies of earth and feeling what earth people are feeling. The court's idea was that this may make the decision makers less detached from the reality on the ground. To be clear, the vast majority of the decision makers were already observing earth and feeling into earth's energies, but not every single decision maker was doing that. Also, most decision makers who were already observing earth weren't spending as much time doing so as the court has now ordered. After all, they do have a lot of work on their plate already. Yet, spending sufficient time observing earth is important too if you are going to make choices regarding earth, as the court has now ruled. So basically, our decision makers have been sentenced to having additional awareness. That is what our courts often like doing, sentencing people to having more awareness. We'll see if this changes the perspective of the decision makers over time. The court is also weighing up in a further decision if some version of this should just become standard for all such situations. I hope that in some way, your suffering will be relieved soonish. I know that many of you are at the end of your rope. I also know that many of you feel that you may be able to technically survive for a while longer, but that if this situation keeps dragging on, then you'll be so exhausted and damaged that you won't have the energy and drive anymore to actually help build a new and better world. Which is what some of you came here to do. You are in my thoughts. I will continue to do what I can on our side to try and help you. Hopefully I will be able to meet you in the not too distant future. With all that said, well. You have my best wishes for the new year. Here is some music that may be a good companion for you in the new year. It is music by the artist Ajit Kaur. You can find her music by searching for Ajit Kaur on YouTube. Your star sister. Tunya.